Hello crafty friends, welcome to another more bang for your buck video. This morning I made this card using the tag die that we've been using in this series. This one here and I used it to cut a stencil which is a great way to get more use out of your dies. So I'm going to show you how I made this card but throw in some alterations as we go to give you a few extra ideas. So the first thing I'm going to do is make my stencil using my tag die and this piece of clear plastic. It's from a big old stamp set that came with a magazine and I don't need it for storing that stamp set. So I'm going to chop it up. You could use any kind of packaging. You can get Mylar, which is the material that stencil companies use to make their stencils. You can get that off Amazon or other places. Or you can use a laminator pouch that you've run through the laminator to uh, get it to stick together. I do have a DIY stencil video if you want more details on that. And I'll leave that linked in the eye and in the description, wherever that is now. So I'm just giving it a bit of a clean with my microfiber cloth and I'm going to cut out my stencil. I don't need this whole sheet so I'll chop it down to a more manageable size and let me just get this bit of paper here so you might be able to see it a bit more easily against that background and I'm going to pop my die in the middle it doesn't have to be straight just stick it there with a bit of washi tape and run that through my die cutting machine. You might find you need to add some shims just to thicken up your sandwich a bit so you get enough pressure. I've got a few bits of card here that I'm going to place under my bottom cutting plate. And I'll stick that on there, that on there, and run it through my cuttle bug. There we have our stencil. So we've got a hole, tag shaped hole. And we've also got the uh, die cut itself. So I could use that as a mask if I wanted to. So I'll keep that somewhere. Well, I'll keep it with this. I'll put them in my stencil folder and uh, keep them together for use at a later date. So I have here a five by seven piece of mixed media paper and some Catherine Pooler inks. I've got Fiesta Blue, All That Jazz and Cummerbund and these are bluey greens. And here is my stencil. Now I want my stenciling to run up and down the card and I want my tag stencils all to be parallel with the top and the bottom edges so I'm going to start here lining up this bit of the stencil with the bottom of the card and I'm going to start with cummerbund which is the lightest colour and I'm going to start off and go in because I don't want to go too heavy because this stenciling is the background of my card so it needs to recede somewhat so I've shuffled my stencil up a bit keeping these edges parallel but shifting it this way a bit so I'm going to get a staggered effect and I'm going to use the cummerbund again no yes the cummerbund that's the right colour to add another light tag shape and again up here I'm going to do something similar but I'm going to bring it all the way out so I've got three cummerbund tag shapes and there we go some background colour there the next one I'm going to do is Fiesta Blue and I'm going to shuffle it back here. Pick up a little bit, this is quite a, a strong colour. So now I've got a little bit of a stronger colour there and I'm going to do this one overlapping now 
These inks, these Catherine Polar inks are dye based, not pigment based. So they are really lovely for layering like this. So you can see through the top color to the bottom color below and you get a nice interesting blend. So I'm only gonna put two of those on for now. Actually, I might just sneak a little bit down here and maybe a small little bit here and a small little bit up here so we've got five bits of this some of these may get lost when I cut my panel down later but we shall see and now I'm going to put one of the All That Jazz because this is a really saturated, strong blue colour. So I'm going to go in quite heavy with this. And this is about a third of the way up. So this is providing a landing spot for whatever focal point I decide to put on it. The blending is looking a bit splotchy at the moment, but that's okay because these inks do smooth out to some degree. So for this card, I used the Be Mine Sweet 16 Pixie Dust and Serenade Catherine Pooler inks from the Party Collection. So it's got a lovely pinky purpley feel to it. This one's a bit more bluey green, well it is bluey green. To do something a little bit different to this one, I'm gonna spatter on some water, quite a significant portion of water. Give that a minute and then soak it up. And that's gonna give it a different feel, something a bit more distressed, something a bit more rustic maybe. So I'll just soak that up with a bit of paper towel because there was an awful lot of water on there. And I'm going to dry it with my hair dryer because I want to do some splattering on it in a minute. And I want the splatters to be really well defined, not to diffuse and spread out. So if I dry it, that should help. So I'm going to put a little bit of cummerbund on my mat, get some water and make a little paint and then do some splattering like that and I'm going to get a bit more off my brush to get some smaller splatters. So the more liquid you have on your brush when you splatter, the bigger your splats will be. And I'm not going to waste that, I'm going to use some mixed media paper to pick that up because that might come in useful later if I want some Cummerbund, was it Cummerbund? No, it was all that jazz. If I want some all that jazz on something. So I'll dry this again before we move on. So I've had a bit of a happy accident. I don't know if you can see, but my brush had a bit of gold metallic watercolour still on it. So my splats have a bit of a gold shimmer to them, which is nice. I'm going to trim this down ever so slightly. Just eyeball it because it's five by seven and I want to make a five by seven card so I need to take a little bit off so I've trimmed that down and mounted it on a five by seven inch card blank and we're ready for the next stage for this card I use the die to cut out a gold glitter die but I'm thinking I want a vellum die for this one so something see-through and I'm going to pop that on there I might actually double it up. I'm going to cut a second vellum tag, but before I do, I'm going to pop some double-sided adhesive on the vellum, and I'm just going to peel off a little bit of the backing, and fold that down, and then get my top tag and get that lined up perfectly. Press it down there, and then when I peel the rest of the backing off, the tags should line up. 
So now I've got a double thickness vellum tag, but it's also got a bit of sticky in the middle. So it's quite thick, but it's still translucent. And you can see the background through it, which I like. And I've cut a piece of the double-sided sticky using the tag die. But it's not got anything else stuck to it because I want to stick this down. And I should have cut both of the tags with uh, sticky on the back, but I didn't. But I can apply it this way. I can put the sticky on the back of the tag like that and now I can peel that off there and stick that on so now that is double sided sticky vellum double sided sticky vellum and I'm going to pop that on there parallel again so it all looks nice and square so now we've got another part of our focal point done so on the original card, I popped the gold cardstock tag up on craft tape, foam tape rather. But this one I've put flat down because obviously if I put foam tape behind that, you'd see it. So I still want to add some glitter to the front of this. So I've got some copper glitter cardstock and I'm going to use it to cut some branches, I think. So I've got one of the tall branch and two of the smaller branch. So I think we'll have them something, something like that. So to add some glue to the back of my die cuts here, I've got my high tech glue and a blending sponge. And I can just pick up the glue and squish it on like that. And when I've finished, I'll just pop the blending sponge in a glass of water. And then when I finish crafting, I'll go and wash it out in some warm soapy water and it'll be absolutely fine. Just another way of adding glue to the back of intricate die cuts. I'm going to move this one a bit and chop off its tail, just have it there like that. So on this one I had this white flower, I wanted to bring some of the white of the background to the foreground with this one, but I think with this one it needs something bold because these colours are a lot bolder so it needed something stronger as its focal point die cut. And on this one I cut a Lots of Love die cut from some card that I'd coloured with the Be Mine, the strongest of the colours I'd used on here. But for this one I think I need to still bring the white to the foreground again, but I will do that by stamping a sentiment on a piece of white card and layering it here I think. So this is one of my hodgepodge stamp sets. When I get random stamp sets from charity shops or off the front of card magazines as I've been buying a couple lately, I gather all my like sentiments together. So these are all happy birthday or birthday type stamps and I put them on a bit of backing and stick them in one of these little wallet pocket things and that way I know I can just grab this for lots of different sentiments to do with birthdays and I've got a thank you one and a thinking of you one and a celebrate one so I'm thinking that little scripty font one now I want to find a die to make a strip with so I've got this little label die it's not quite long enough but we can get around that that is not a problem I've got a bit of mixed media paper here because I want it to be made from the same card as the front panel and I'm just going to pop that on there and I think we'll do it in black. So now I shall line this up. Like so. And I'm going to pop it so only half of it is in the folder, which means this bit won't cut. 
Now I can take that bit off there, get those to fit in the grooves, line it up like that, that in the folder, but have it so that this bit of the die is hanging out. And now we shall have our sentiment that is the perfect length. So that's going to go on there, I think. I like that, around about there. But I think I'm going to just do a little experiment with this bit that we used to blot up the, I think it was, all oh, that jazz, wasn't it? I think I'm going to try and find something to cut from it. So I'm going to use this stitched banner die, which has got fishtails either end. I'm not sure if I'll use both ends yet, but we'll see. So that could go on there like that. And that could sit on there like that. I think that works. So we're going to pop that up on craft foam to give everything a little bit of dimension now and this I'll glue on the banner and on this one I used this wonky circle die to cut out some little dots in that be mine color and I'm going to do the same with this one but I'm going to use the copper because I think we need a little bit of copper spread about. Let's have a little bit of glue there and I can pick up my copper dots. Right, so there we go. Another way to use your dies, you can use them to create stencils. And we've got two cards here made using the same design ideas, the same techniques, but different colours, uh, different arrangements of things. Do let me know in the comments which of these two you prefer. I think I'm leaning towards this one. I do like the splattering on this one, but I love this colour combination. I think it's gorgeous. Although the lots of love is a little bit lost, I think, on that flowery die cut. So I might, if I were to do this one again, do something like this on here. Right, I hope you've enjoyed today's video and it's given you some ideas. If it has, do leave a thumbs up, a comment, subscribe, ring the notification bell and I'll see you back here very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.